led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. different story to share. What do they say? Well, one say two crook hold up stage. Other passengers say maybe three, four men hold up stage. And the third passenger? And him say big gang. Sheriff talk now. Try to get straight story. Where does the robbery take place? Near Devil Rock. Oh. Rain comes soon. Wash away all sign before Sheriff finish asking questions. Get posse ready. Well, that's why you came here on the double. Good for you, Toto. We start right away. We may be able to find tracks. There's no stagecoach robbery for a long time. Maybe this new gang starts. You may be right. If it is a new gang, this is the time to smash it. Two or three successful robberies make it possible for a gang to recruit new members and become too powerful. There, I'm ready. Steady, easy, big fella. <laughs> sheriff, but not ahead of rain. By the time they found tracks that pointed out the place where the stagecoach had been halted, the rain was falling steadily. They got here just in time, Toto. A few minutes more, there been no tracks at all. Isn't that right? As far as I can see, there are only two men involved in the whole lift. Uh, two men and two horses. The men must have waited in ambush right beneath these trees. Uh, plenty footprint here. 
Two different kinds of boots. Uh, here's something, Toto. One of the horses twisted his tail against this tree. With a long hair. Ah, black horn. At least one with a black tail. The hoof marks seem to lead north. Damn this head for Badlands. I don't know how far we can follow the tracks, but we'll start. Max, nearly washed out now. By the time Sheriff gets here, there'll be none left. Come on, Toto. Let's see what we can find. Easy, steady, make it up. Easy, fella. Oh, hello! Jeb Peterson owned a small ranch not far from town. When his daughter married Tom Morton, Tom became a well-liked member of the family. The family was at supper, and for the first time since the wedding, Jane was absent. She had gone to visit her aunt. Uh, the table sure seems very with Jane gone. Sure does, Tom. I declare, it seems like she's been gone for 24 days instead of 24 hours. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, there's something wrong. Huh? Wrong? You've hardly touched your food. Uh, I guess I, I miss daughter. And Tom misses her too, but he's eaten. Something is wrong, Dad. What is it? Uh, nothing. Nothing at all. I guess I was thinking of that stage holdup and the murder of the guard and the driver. Someone's outside. Hmm. Maybe Jane's come home earlier than she planned. It's the door. I'll go. Good evening, sir. I'll step in for a minute, Tom. All right. Well, Jeb, uh, look where you suggested, and I found part of it. Take a look at this, Tom. Tell me if you recognize it. The wallet? No, I never saw it before. How about this watch? You ever see this? No. Why? Well, then, take a look at this. Well, that's my knife. You admit it, eh? Of course. Why shouldn't I? I'll get to that, Tell me, have you a black bandana? Yeah. What up? I'm asking the question, Tom. Were you around three o'clock this afternoon? Three? Uh, let me see. Oh, yeah, I was on the south line checking fence wire. Can you prove that? Well, no. Why should I have to prove it? Because it would be mighty handy if you had an alibi for the time of the stage holder. <laughs> What? Even if you've got no alibi, I'll have to put you under arrest, Tom. Arrest? Sheriff, you must be loco. Why, Tom, what are you... stage robbers wore a black bandana for a mask. All the passengers agree on that. Your knife was found near the stick-up. This watch and wallet and a few other things were taken from the passengers. I found them near the knife. I can see why you wouldn't want to be caught with them in your possession. Oh, now, see here, Sheriff... Jeb, tell him he's crazy. I can't do that, Tom. You'll have to face the music. But, but Jeb! No use lying, Tom. You you mean to say you think I robbed that stage? Now, you know blame well you weren't near the line fence at 3 o'clock. I know blame well I was. I thought you'd planned to check line fence. And I was surprised when I saw you riding past the town. Riding past town? I saw you, son. I wondered why you'd left the job, so I followed along at a good distance. You were a couple of miles ahead of me around the bend in the stage trail when I heard gunplay. All a downright lie. The stage came whipping past me with a passenger handling the reins. I kept going. When I rounded the bend, I saw you hiding something near some bushes next to the road. Jeb. Jeb, what in the world's gotten into you? You're making that up out of whole cloth. You're lying in every word. You're lying me to a hangman. Oh, uh, Tom. Jeb might lie to help you. He wouldn't lie to send his own son in law to jail. I can see why he's doing it. I put all my savings into this ranch when I married Jane. I paid off the debts and bought cattle so as I'd be half owner. Now the whole thing will be Jeb's if I hang. No, Tom. No, that's not Don't that. talk to me, you mealy mouthed old ghost. Oh, you have to get to town, Tom. You ready to go? All right. Come on, take me to jail where I won't have to look at the biggest liar that ever lived. Oh, Tom, if you You've got to tell Jane I'm a killer. See what she says. And you just see what she calls you when she hears I'm charged with murder because of your lie. The Lone Ranger and Tuttle had returned to their camp after the tracks of the hold-up men were washed out by the rain. The following morning, Tonto went into town. He stood around unobtrusively and learned that Tom had spent the night in jail. And he learned other things. 
that he reported when he rejoined the masked man in camp. Page passengers all go to jail. Look at Tom Morton. Did they say he looked like one of the outlaws? All say him same size. No one see face in hold up. Face covered by bandana. A minute ago, you said Tom's life had been found in the holdup. Did uh, Tom say anything about that? Well, him blame Jeb Peterson. His father-in-law. Ah. Blame Jeb. Fix frame up. I know of Jeb Peterson. I don't believe he'd do anything like that. Father, when was Tom arrested? A well, sheriff take him from ranch house last night. Just before dark. Just before dark? Are you sure? Well, that's what sheriff tell other people in town. We followed the tracks of the killers toward the Badlands as long as we could see them. If Tom Morton hadn't made those tracks, he couldn't possibly have been in the Peterson ranch house before dark. That's right. Furthermore, we didn't find any knife near the hole up. Must have been placed there after we left. Ah. Otto, I think Tom was framed. At least we know he was not one of the outlaws. We're the only ones who know it. We're the only ones who saw the tracks before they were washed out by rain. Up to us to act. You think Jeb framed Tom? I'm going to talk to Jeb. Steady, Silver. Oh, tighten the cinch. Um, Jeb, not at ranch now. No? Do you know where he is? Uh, him in town. And we'll see him in town. All right, I'm ready. Come on. He's Let's go, Silver. Old Jeb Peterson sat at a table in the rear corner of the cafe. His eyes were red from lack of sleep, and his face was set in lines of worry and despair. He looked up with disinterest as two men came to the table. Yeah, sit down, Red. Check with the old man. Right. Leave me alone, Bart. I've done all you told me to. What did you tell the sheriff? What's the difference? Tom's in jail, isn't he? Bart, ask what you told the sheriff. Answer up. I said I'd seen Tom hiding something. That's what you told me to tell him. Now Tom's in jail. You kept my part of the bargain. When are you going to keep yours? As soon as Tom hangs, then they'll all be satisfied. I figure the killer is paid. Well, that may be weeks. Not around here, Jim. Law works fast. You can't let the girl go before he hangs. You might change your story. Is Jane all right? You said you'd prove she was all right. Here's the note from her saying she ain't been hurt. You might kill her after Tom's hung, so she can't tell about being captured. Name you too. He told you, Jeb. She hasn't seen her faces. She can't make trouble for us. We'll let her go when the hanging's over. Now just sit tight and don't worry. Come on, Red. Let's go to the Crystal Palace. All right. We'll be seeing you, Jeb. A few moments after Bart and Red had left the table, Tonto approached the heartsick old man. You, Jim Peterson? Yes. Yeah, I'm Peterson. What do you want? Well, you come out in back. Friend there, one talk. Oh, well, you not know him, but him friend. You come. Jeb followed Toto to the rear of the cafe and crossed to the saddle shed where the Lone Ranger stood with Scout and Silver and a couple of other horses. One was a big black. Yeah. You're mad. That's why I didn't care to speak to you inside. But I don't... Toto told you I was a friend. If you're on the level, that's true. Now, uh, who owns this black horse? Why? Why do you ask that? I'm just wondering. Hey, go! 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 You, Jeb! What are you doing here, horse? Come on, Jeb, we're traveling. Well, let me go. Let me down. Go, 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 go. You're riding with me. Come on, Toto. Let me down. I'm on fire. Come see you. Oh. 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 He was mad. He captured Jeb. I'll throw some light. Oh, no, no. Oh, how's your fire? You might kill Jeb. He's got to live to testify against Tom Morton. <laughs> we'll try to catch that masked man. Get him up. Get him up. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue. Jeb Peterson had no chance to resist. The Blue Ranger grabbed him suddenly and rode, carrying the old rancher on the great horse Silver. Tonto followed close behind. Red and Bart were quickly outdistanced. Then the masked man halted in an isolated gully. He questioned Jeb at length. At first, the old man was evasive, but he finally told about the evidence that had caused Tom Morton's arrest. You saw Tom hide the wallet and the other things taken from the passengers? Yes. Yes, I came back to town and told the sheriff. Then I went with him and the posse and showed where I'd seen Tom hiding something in the bushes. They found his knife. He dropped it there. Otto, we didn't take time to look for anything hidden in the bushes. Mm, that right. What's that? Jeb, you might have been instructed ahead of time just what to tell the sheriff. Huh? You might have taken a knife from Tom's bedroom and left it near those bushes. But why? To frame Tom. You see, we know that Tom was not one of the robbers. Tom and I were there before rain washed out the tracks. We followed the hoof marks of the horses ridden by the outlaws of the Badlands. If Tom had been one of those men, he couldn't possibly have had time to reach your home before dark. But I... I asked you about a black horse near the cafe. Yeah? That horse was ridden by one of the killers. You see two men in cafe. Same two chase us. I don't know what to say. What did you lie about, Tom? I, I... Did those two men make you do it? Please, don't make me tell no more. What did your daughter say when you sent Tom to jail? My daughter... Janie, my little girl. I don't know what she'll say. Then she doesn't know. She'll, she'll turn on me, the same as my wife. She'll hate me. Let's have the real story, Jeb. You're in trouble, more than you can handle. You're helping two men get away with murder. They must be clever men to trap you like this. They must be clever enough to start a new gang, a powerful gang. If, if I was just sure I could trust you. Try it. I've got to. You're right. Those two are the hold-up men. They're called Red and Bart. <laughs> Go ahead. Jane, my daughter, she set out to spend a week with her aunt and old Rim. Red and Bart, they captured her. They're hiding her away. They planned to stick up a stagecoach. They were smart enough to know that the law would have to be satisfied. Someone had to hang. So they made you frame Tom? <laughs> it was that or they'd kill Janie. Tom's life or hers. <laughs> what choice did I have? You, you had proof that the girl was captured? Yeah, they, they showed me no strong. I, I got them here. Well, let me see them. Yeah. Uh, I, I know Tom would be willing to die for Janie. He said so many a time. I'd do the same. I'd sooner die than go on living and being hated by everyone, including my wife and Jane. <laughs> Tom. Tom. The way he looked at me when I took him away. I, I love that boy like he was my own son. He'd be free if you told the truth. No. Red and Bart would be jailed. But Jane, she'd die. No one knows where they got her. She'd either be killed by the pals of those crooks or she'd starve to death. Jeff, <laughs> maybe something can be done. I, I don't know what it would be. These notes from your daughter give me an idea. Yeah? Uh, uh, what is it? Maybe we can trick Red and Bart into revealing where Jane is hidden. Yeah, if we could only get her away from those poor cats, time is mighty short. Go back to town, Jeb. When Red and Bart ask questions about the masked man who made off with you, just say it was a mistake. Tell them I got the wrong man. Yeah? But then what? Leave the rest to Tonto and me. Tonto. Uh -huh. I want a disguise. Get the old clothes from the saddlebags. I'll wear the false beard. I'll dress like an old desert rat. And then I'll write a note. I'll try to copy Jane's handwriting. By mid-afternoon, the news of Tom's arrest had spread to ranches on all sides of town. And in town, everyone was talking about the case. There seemed to be no doubt about Tom's guilt. Bart and Red were standing in front of the cafe when the Lone Ranger dismounted at a nearby hip trail. He was disguised as an old desert rat with tattered clothing and a scraggly beard. The great horse, Silver, with an old saddle, was spattered and streaked with dirt and mud. <laughs> in news of a murder trial, sure brings a lot of strangers into town. Look at the old desert rat. Yeah. <laughs> Howdy, Pop. Did you come to town for the trial? Howdy, young fella. How do you do? Uh, you look to be a down that accommodating gent. Uh, maybe you could direct me to the Peterson Ranch. The Peterson Ranch? Or uh, maybe it's called the Morton Ranch. I don't rightly know. Now, if you could... Why do you want to go there? Well, you see, uh, got me a letter here. Got it in one of my pockets. Uh, uh, here it is. Let me see it. The safe so alive. Where'd you get this? I didn't even snatch it. I said, where'd you get it? Well, now, see here, mister, I don't have to answer your questions. 
Business hell, I got that uh, letter. I got it, that's all. It's worth a dollar to me. A dollar? How's that? The girl who passed it to me said Mr. Peterson and Mr. Morton would give me a dollar if I took it to the ranch. Well, if you just tell me how to... Uh, here, I'll give you the dollar. Well, now, that's mighty kind of you. I'll be seeing Peterson. I'll give it to him. Well, thank you, young man. Uh, thank you, kind me. I'm going to see what this here dollar will buy. Here, look at this note. Looks like Jane's handwriting. Listen to this. She says, on my way to Old Rim, I was captured. I'm being held prisoner. The man who brings you this note can lead you to me. Hurry. Signed, Jane. Something must have gone wrong at the shack. Maybe she talked the half-breed into helping her. We'd better not take any chances. And that old-timer might get talking. Go get him. We'll take him along with us. It's a good idea. Timer, did you read this here note you got from the girl? <laughs> well, now, young man, when you speak a reason, right? Well, now, that is... Never a... mind. I want you to take us to the place where you got it. And what if I don't have to do that thing? Huh? You've got no choice. Get into the saddle. Now, get going. <laughs> Ranger, disguised as an old man, rode slowly on soft ground. Bart was on one side and Red on the other. They were several miles from town. There should be tracks around here, Summers. The only tracks I can see are those we're making. I'm looking for my own back trail. Maybe I could fail by cutting across country. Hold on. Stop here. Oh, hold hold it, hold it. Oh, that's the trouble. Hey, put aside that gun. I told you to lead us to the place where you got that letter. You've changed direction about six times. You're just leading us on a wild goose chase, aren't you? I told you I was trying to find a shortcut to my back trail. Get it done, bud. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, I got it. Uh, you're going with us. If you try to break away, we'll cut you down. Are we going to the shack? Yeah. Get him back. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. Come on. Jeb had become increasingly impatient as he waited in the cafe with Tonto for the disguised Lone Ranger. Finally, he went out to make inquiries. He came back excited and badly shaken. There's trouble we didn't figure out. Uh, what that? I was talking to some of the boys, asking if they'd seen anything of a desert rat. One of them saw him talking to Red and Bart. Huh? When? It was over an hour ago. And listen, Tonto, he left town with those two. Oh. That's not how Lone Ranger planned. Who? Mask friend. You, you, you call him the Lone Ranger. Great day, is that who he is? Him go with outlaw. That means something go wrong. We've got to do something in quick. They've already got a big start. Him in trouble. Him cry and leave trail. And we follow. An old ranger, still wearing a disguise, was taken by Red and Bart to an old shack in an isolated part of the country. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, get off that horse and walk inside. He was closely watched by both his captors. The door of the shack was opened by a half-breed. Oh, senor. Uh, you get out of the way. You get in there, mister. Ready, you Shut up. Breed, take a look at this letter. Si, senor. You can read it. Tell me how that girl got it out of here. Amigo, she could get nothing out of here. She has been tied since the last time you were here. What about it, Jane? I don't know what you're talking about. But I do know you'd better release me. Right, you keep a gun on the old timer, and I'll breed as well. Right. Then you're a gun on me. There's something funny about this, and I'm going to find out what it is. Take a look at this letter, Jane. Did you write it? You know what I wrote. You wrote a few notes to your father like I told you to. But what about this? Take a look at it. <laughs> what kind of a deal did you make with Bree so he let you write this letter? Why don't you ask him? No, no, that is not true. I did not let her write. I know nothing about it. I thunder someone's going to talk. I'll give you two a couple of minutes to think things over. And let me warn you, there'll be a couple of dead men in this room if I don't get through back. The Lone Ranger knew that he would be killed by Red sooner or later. There was every reason to suppose that Breed, too, would be shot. Standing close to the wall next to the half-breed, he carefully weighed his chances against the two armed men and decided that he at least could die fighting. Well, Breed, you got anything to say? You ready to confess that you let the girl write a letter? I did not do it, senor. She has not been untied since the last time you were here. About the letter, I know nothing. I'll get back to you in a minute. Now, old timer, maybe you're ready to talk. 
Was that girl untied when she gave you the letter? Well, all I can tell you, mister, is this. Look out! A sudden blow knocked aside Red's gun, and the Lone Ranger charged low. Bart fired once. His bullet was high and chugged into the opposite wall. The Lone Ranger came up from the floor with a sharp jab to Bart's chin. Oh, take it! The same instant, he grabbed the gun with his other hand, but Bart held on. Give me that gun. Not a chance. I'll fix him. Using his gun as a club, Red struck down at the Lone Ranger's head. The blow was staggering. Bart jerked free. Good work, Red. For a moment, the Lone Ranger staggered back. Dazed. Now, I'll finish the old critter. He's stronger than I thought. You brace. There we are. Don't mix in. Stop again. No. In the window, Why, you up again. I'll show you. No. No. Jebbin fired from the window, causing red time as the killer swung toward the door. The sheriff rushed in, followed by Tonto. Here's the pony. No, no way uh, for us, sir. How do you, Tonto? Uh, Come in here, Jebbin. I'm coming. I'm coming, Sheriff. Tonto, you got here just in time. You all right, Kim uh, uh, Well, you made it in time, Hank. Uh, you ride where ground soft. Leave good trail. You go slow. We ride plenty fast. Here. Here, gun. Thanks, Toto. Jane, Jane, honey, are you all right? Uh, yes, Dad, you just get these ropes off. I'll have them off in no time. Red and Bart were going to... I know all about it, honey, and so does the sheriff. Sheriff, That's right. the situation, mister. There's no need to explain anything. When Jeb found you left town with these two killers, he came to me and told her he'd lied about his son-in-law. You did that, Jeb? You don't know me, I did. Yeah, there's some good in here, Red Lord. Get in here, boys. Put some reps on these troops. Yeah, those men, Sheriff, you'll not need Tonto and me. Uh, I'd like to go to my camp and get rid of this disguise. Who's he? You the Red Lord. We'll have him, Jane. Well, come on, Tonto. Uh-huh. As soon as you get them out, we'll take them into town. Let's see, Jeb. Yes, sir. I'm curious about one thing. You were willing to let Tom hang to save the life of your brother. When the life of Tommy's friend was at stake, he told me everything, so I'd come here with you. Well, see, Sheriff, Tom's friend means more to the West than any of us, including me and my whole family. He's the Lone Ranger. I'll see you. Oh! <laughs> The feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's drama was written by Fran Stryker. A part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.